Hello and welcome to this week's Foot Weekly podcast. Schedule's still a little bit all over the place, but it'll be an interesting podcast because we're talking about the FIFA 23 beta. Those on the podcast have played it. We'll be giving our thoughts as well as some tips and advice. This one is going to be more content focused. We'll move into talking about gameplay towards the end and then there'll be a supporter episode primarily focused on gameplay. Before we get into it, obviously we can read plenty into it, but it is a product in development and is not reflective of the final product. Things like gameplay, content, tuning, assets and play ratings may differ in FIFA 23. A shout out to the EA Creator Network for making this opportunity possible. Let's introduce regular on this podcast, Ed Japes. I know it's been a busy summer and you haven't had too much of an opportunity to get on the beta, but I'm sure you'll be sharing your experiences and interested to hear what other people think too. Yeah, definitely. I think it's been a, I don't know, an amuse-bouche or something <laughs> for me of got heading into FIFA this year. It's just like a little bite-sized snack heading into the new year. And, you know, I'm I'm happy that I get the chance to ask what's OP, what's not OP, mm. uh, and what I need to be looking out for as I head into playing the full title. A snack, you say? Was that a nice segue into talking about your recently started newsletter that people yeah i'm into snacks ben (laughs) yeah 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 i'm into snacks so starting for fifa 23 i'm going to be doing a weekly fifa newsletter bite-sized snacks it's called p2p snacks on what's new through the week any tactics formations uh stuff that i like but really trying to you know create some digestible content kind of documenting my my foot experience over the course of 23 as well as providing you know some helpful guidance and reviews along the way so if that's something that you're interested in uh you can head on over to my twitter twitter.com slash air japes and uh because it's done through a tool or a website called review uh who twitter now owns you can subscribe directly from my profile very enjoyable first newsletter looking forward to the next one and on that thank you ben you're welcome and we will introduce our other guest chew boy welcome back to the pod hello how are you guys doing yeah good thanks so we should introduce our next guest who is ivan dr nightwatch a pro and i guess also what coaching as well things like that thanks for having me hi to to all of you yeah i've been competing so far still kind of unsure on my plans on next year probably a bit of coaching a bit of pro a bit of freelancing so we'll see what's what but yeah definitely excited to talk about the beta yeah indeed and we're going to talk more gameplay later but here mainly foot and i wanted to start with this question dive straight into it about foot moments this is a new mode of course and tom says if there were any moments in the beta this is the new foot moments mode i'd love to hear about the experience with them generally Uh, you know how specific do the scenarios get are there team restrictions or can you just use what you have Uh, i know tom likes his trading so i wonder whether this might have a bit of a a trading slant to it um with player restrictions and things but yes there were moments in the beta and we can talk about what kind of things they were requiring we don't know whether that's going to be something that will be in the game uh, kind of the final version ivan did you see them did you check them out i mean i did try them it is a new feature so i Considering you have that much time on the beta, you, you kind of try a bit of everything. Mm. EA have made it in a way that they can pretty much do whatever they want, put requirements, leave it open, make it very specific, make it very broad. So I think it kind of depends on the content, if you can call it that, on in that mode, how they, how they make it. What we had was uh, there were some specific with Spanish players. Uh, there, were, there was one specific one with Mbappe where... You need to have Mbappe, but they give you one for a one game loan. So you don't have to buy one off the market or have packed him. So I think they can pretty much do whatever they want. They can let you have the player for a specific objective. They can make you build a team like an SBC and go into game with it. So I think it's pretty broad and they've given themselves a lot of opportunity for content there. Yeah, for sure. And to... I mean, as someone who is on the inside, how do you see them using this? Do you think they're going to get as specific as kind of squad building requirements? Or I noticed in the beta, you know, you maybe had like three Monaco players required for a specific moment. What is is that kind of thing what they'll do? Like, can you see them actually really kind of pushing it? I, I don't know. I see them definitely yeah, pushing that element to it. I mean, I guess the way I saw moments when it was first announced is like just a way to like, you know, recreate special moments in real mm-hmm. life and then duplicate that in the game uh, where there's historical moments, moments that we just saw from the weekend of matches um, from like the Premier League, La Liga, whatever. 
So I think squad requirements would be a way to like just change things up because I I kind of I actually like the mode more than I thought I would. Yeah, same actually. Yeah. Yeah, I, I actually really did. I I'm, I'm never into single player modes to be honest with you, like uh, stupid squad battles, mm. uh, or the AI cheats. But <laughs> this was kind of it was just like a very it just it didn't feel very uh, serious, which is good. It just felt like you know I, I like the little bite size element to it. As I'm getting older in age, it's like I don't actually like sitting through a whole match of AI gameplay versus just sitting through a minute of it was kind of fun. And I just kind of go through a whole, um, like uh, Ivan mentioned that the Mbappe moments was like, uh, it's like a whole bunch of um, challenges, maybe like 20 or so. So just like sitting down and going through each one was just kind of, was just kind of fun mm. to be honest. And you can just restart and try it again. And when you're in the challenge, you can just quickly restart it. So, you know, if you look away, because I don't know, Manchester United have uh, scored against Arsenal, mm. then you can. And, you know, you can go back and restart and, and have another go. So it's not like many of the other elements of foot where you really do have to be quite kind of focused and switched on all the time, which was quite nice. Also, there's a huge variety, I think, of, of gameplay scenarios. I mean, you've got some which are just literally like score a free kick which is obviously pretty quick. Or you've got another which might be, you know, get two goals and an assist in the second half of a match. But I do think that kind of relationship to real life football is going to be great. And I know, Japes, this is something you mentioned early on with the World Cup, right? Yeah, um, I think it'll be pretty media. I think it's a huge opportunity for, you know, around the World Cup, like daily, daily content mm. with this, um, which I think for those of us that don't like grinding menus mm. that much gives us another opportunity to you know i guess like grind gameplay a little bit and more uh bite-sized pieces agreed i don't know if there's anything else to add on moments actually we've probably covered what we kind of saw there is this foot star currency but it's quite hard to kind of know what that's going to mean in terms of rewards but my understanding is those rewards are going to be kind of like semi-permanent or you, you can keep them it's not like foot tokens where they become irrelevant at some point which is nice and i don't know from your perspective too it's clearly going to be a big focus isn't it because it's actually one of the currencies across the top of the screen so unlike i don't know those what were they the ones last year team events which a lot of people are like oh is foot moments just going to be another team events it can't be right because it is such a focus if it's going to be in that top bar i'm trying to figure out what the the, the motive is i guess you could say because of course you don't want it's right next to I'm looking at my screens right now. It's right next to the FIFA point mm. from indicator in the top left, right? So it's like I don't think they want people to like only stick to their stars. I mean they obviously want people to spend money. So I'm trying to think the I mean the rewards can't be that good. You know what I mean? Like I would like them to be good. And I think actually moments is a great way to like just get some nice easy packs at the start of the game mm. um if we still have that mbappe moment um mission at the start of the game i think it's a great way to get some packs i mean i saw some like you know i think it was like a mega pack i mean it, it, it took like 125 something stars to get a ultimate pack i believe i don't think you could even do it in the start of mm. beta so uh, i think maybe you know if you just want a quick way to get like a mega pack or like a 40k pack i think that's the way to do it but i don't think they'll you know, make it such a, uh, you know, a way they could just rely on stars to get through all of Ultimate Team and have a good team, you know? Yeah, yeah I agree. I think, uh, yeah, um, it's going to be an interesting mode. I think it's going to be something that I'll do more of than I had perhaps expected, especially with, as Chu said, you know, the time commitment um, and things. So that was quite nice. And yeah, it'll be a good thing to kind of pick up for people to earn extra rewards uh, early on. Anything else? On that note, I think, I think we've probably covered it enough. We can move on to, to something else. Um, I wanted to, I guess, move on to what is perhaps the bigger news of the past week in terms of foot, which is the changes to chemistry. They've actually made chemistry slightly easier or chem points slightly easier to get in an update they've announced for chemistry in FIFA 23. So what they've said is that now you're going to see nations... Whereas previously it would have been three players from the same nation to get that first chemistry point. It's now going to be just two players to get that first chemistry point for nation. And then there's a reduction just generally higher up 
the scale as well for that second and third chemistry point for each nation, league, club, etc. So if I run through all of them, club is now going to be two players gets you one chemistry point. Another two players gets you a, gets you another chem point. Three more players will get you the third chemistry point. Uh, and then as I said for nation, first one is now two players. The second one is three players. And the third one will be three players. And then for league, you've got three players from the same league, two players from the same league, and then another three players from the same league. So the way they've kind of structured it is clearly make it easier, but with a focus on making that first chem point for nation easier, which I think does make so much sense because I know you've had quite a lot of experimentation with this, but I certainly found it felt a bit unfair on nation to put them in the same bracket as league when obviously everyone builds around a league. So it's really easy. Yeah, um, I mean, it was hard to, uh, of course, you know, you are listening to the the voice of that trailer, even though it took me like uh, oh, yeah. two, sure. two, two weeks to understand, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like yeah. two weeks to understand chemistry the first the first go. You know, it's, it's always hard to announce a feature, but then you don't really know what the feature fully does until it's in the hands of like millions of people. Mm. Um, so I think when people were able to, you know, mess around, um, you know, the websites like FUTGG were able to make the squad builders and people could test how this chemistry works. And then I remember messing around with it. And I was like, yeah, I can really, literally cannot get a team on full cam. I don't know if that's the idea now is that like you don't have to have the team on full cam, you know. But of course, uh, what, one thing I was telling EA in the, in behind the scenes was like, yeah, everybody's going to want to get full cam. Like mm. it's just your, your, your mind just goes towards there just based on the training we've had over the last decade, right? But then with these changes, I think it's a lot easier, it seems like. I, one thing I noticed is that if you have like three players from the same nation and club, then they all get three cam, which really helps. So if you put like Cancelo, Bernardo, Ruben Diaz, all in the same team, then th all three of them would get three cam. Mm, it's kind of the new perfect link, isn't it, in a way? Exactly. A nice little like uh, what we used to call perfect link uh, triangle. Mm. Um, so I think this is a welcome change. I think people who do understand chemistry so far have appreciated this change. And um, yeah, I think with the, the nation change in particular was uh, was a very good addition. Yeah, it's a slight buff as well to icons, isn't it? As well, as well which I think certainly looking at the way that icons work in the chem system and heroes, heroes were looking a lot better um, because they boost your player count for league by two and nation by one, whereas uh, icons were just doing nation by two, which meant that obviously, you know, nation less built around, maybe not so useful. And it was only, it wasn't, you know, boosting as much because that's two players versus three, of course. Now with the fact that nation for that first player has been reduced, that's going to make it a little easier. Although does it though, because you've, you've actually got to get three players from the same nation to get to your second point. And when we're talking about league, you've got to get only two in addition to the first three to get to your second point. So it's kind of the same if you're trying to get to that second chemistry point. Probably very confusing to hear over audio, but head over to squad builders like yeah. .gg and you can uh, mess around and you'll see what we mean. I think it is one of those things you really have to do it. Uh, I was thinking, you know, shall I explain it on the podcast? But, uh, you know, in depth, it's just very, very difficult to, to understand without doing it. Hmm. But on that, we should probably just speak about it with Ivan and Chu in terms of the overall concept, the change to chemistry. Ivan, how are you feeling about it? Obviously, you played the beta, so you've had plenty of opportunity to mess around with chemistry. How do you feel it's going to kind of be from a, a usability perspective, first of all, I suppose? Now, I would rank it the best is the one we currently have. Second best is what we had previously in terms of like past FIFAs. And third best would be the one pre pre-change FIFA 23. Mm, so, so the beta version. This, yeah, yeah. Yes. So I think this change is definitely gives you a lot more options in terms of your squad building and not being forced to have same club players in a team to reach thresholds. As you said, everyone wants like the full 33 camps. Mm -hmm. I think that's one good thing. I think the second good thing is that managers, so a manager, I think, if I'm not mistaken, can now give both a nation and a league link to a player, which to one specific player, which in previous FIFAs, they couldn't. They only gave you one camp point instead mm. of two. Yep. And the only downside now that I can think of it, we just kind of talked about it briefly, is the icons. I think it will be kind of difficult to get three chem points on icons. 
um, because you obviously don't have the club because you would need another icon. You don't have the league because it's the icon league. So you kind of oh, have we should to say rely... that they weren't. You probably didn't have any in the beta, but they do get full cam straight away. Straight when... away. Fair yeah, enough. yeah, like okay. they're always on. Full cam. <laughs> we didn't get icons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we never used icons in the beta, but yeah, they, they do get full cam straight okay, away. Okay, my bad. So, so it makes it crazy. The thing with icons though is they. I think still even with this change, they're worse than heroes for chemistry because both of them get perfect like full chemistry themselves, but heroes give. Two to league, one to nation. Yeah. Whereas icons just give two to nation, and obviously two league is better than two nation generally because people build around leagues. So, but I guess stat wise they're better, so it's kind of evens out. You know. Yeah. I mean, well, maybe you want <laughs> ones for them, and you want ones for the players themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. I'm frankly super excited about this system. I think it makes it a lot easier for, I don't know, in some ways like an average player to take a couple players from your favorite club, no matter what position they play and put them in a squad. And so like one of the things I keep thinking about is taking like Hongman son used to be such a pain to get into squads. And now to me, it feels like very simple to at least get him on two chem. Mm -hmm. And I think based on the, the player ratings so far, I think we're going to see very quick boosts to you know, via promos or informs. And I and and the other thing that I'll say on that is the idea that two chem will be plenty of chem like sooner rather than later, I think is definitely going to be the case. And also they've made it so that if it's zero chem, you don't lose any base points. So I think as the cycle goes on, you're going to be able to just plug in whatever players you want and like quote unquote maybe for the first time build your true ultimate team. Mm. Right? Which I don't think has ever been the case. Yeah, we talked about this at the time, but Chu, I think the biggest thing for people will be if they get a really good untradeable player who's completely irrelevant to the team they've currently got, they can just chuck them in. They'll be all right. Yeah, and uh, like Jabe says, I mean, we've never fully been able to make our ultimate team. This is the first time, right? So hmm. um, Lewandowski, Sons, those kind of players. Um, I, I wonder if this is what the casual has been asking for even though the mid to hardcore has been asking for to get those like players from certain nations to be able to get involved I, I i just wonder now how squad building will go down whether it's just people will not even fit those players as long as you know let, let's say there's a certain just type of player that you need mm. in fifa now versus like going out of your way to fit a Lewandowski. are you just going to stick to these like few players and this like certain team that just has full cam with certain French players and certain this league players and like will we even want to fit those guys in? I don't know if that quite, if that made sense, but mm -mm. I'm just not sure how this will go. Yeah, I don't know where 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 the trend will go. You know, well, I think a big thing is, and I'm sure as a pro, Ivan, you've looked at this, is how big these boosts are from the chemistry because ultimately that is gonna be a huge determining factor as to whether people want to get two or three chem or, or one you know or maybe happy with one or or no chem this has been released it's tricky for me to explain in terms of every chemistry style obviously what the impact is on one two and three chemistry points but what i think i will do is just mention the pace change for hunter catalyst shadow you know the the big pace boost chemistry styles um, because i guess that is probably one of the most important things to people anyway um, so if I go from zero chem, obviously will be base stats, so no boost at all from chemistry styles. And then one chem, uh, this will mean a plus two from the hunter chem style on acceleration and a plus two on sprint speed. And then if I go over to two chem, hunter will see a plus four on acceleration and sprint speed. And then if I go to three chem, um, we will see a plus eight on acceleration and sprint speed so it's quite a big jump actually because it doubles each time and then if you look at the things which get a plus 15 boost so uh, let's find a stat which is receiving a plus 15 actually, okay so dead eye you've got a plus 15 on three chem points for shot power but if we go down to the two chem it's only an eight boost and if we go down to one chem, it's just plus three. So if you look across the boost, I think there is really an incentive to push towards 
three chem and actually probably not a huge incentive maybe to get one chemistry point over just the base stats which makes things interesting i think it will incentivize people to push on to the higher chem points but also i think it's just worth noting japes as you've called for in the past there is certainly uh, a nerf to chemistry styles or a reduction in their impact the key thing for me here is like there are going to be promos and a lot of them and i imagine the cards are going to get more significant boosts this system like what i'm seeing you know on the screen as far as where the attribute boosts are feels like they're saying these chemistry styles are going to be perhaps a lot less relevant this year mm, yeah just across the board which is good is good and if you're someone that's like, I need to get plus eight pace on all of my defenders, well, then you can prioritize three attribute points mm -hmm. or three chem on those guys and, you know, go nuts. I personally, you know, the, um, I think we're going to see a lot of defenders with high or plenty of pace. And I think the, what well, we, you know, we, we talked about this like accelerate system or how that might work for defenders. I, you know, I just think all of this to me points to a system that's trying to say, how can we let people feel better about getting their actual favorite players in the squad together and not feeling like they need all the chemistry? And I think that's what they're doing, especially as more and more promo cards are introduced and base ratings go up. They're going to be so much less relevant than they have been in past years. It's my early take, at least. I mean, in terms of chem styles, I do think they have been, I wouldn't say heavily nerfed, but definitely nerfed. And in terms of the, the chem points, I think Chubo said it nice at the start, like everybody will go for that full chem. So especially at, at the high level, if you're asking me uh, kind of as a, a pro and pro play, I think no one will want to put themselves in really a disadvantage unless the, there's something very, very obvious. Everyone will kind of go towards the the full camp points to, to get kind of the, the, the best stats possible on their players, right? I think what that system helps with is exactly the mixing of your favorite players, something that in previous EFOs would give you very bad chemistry. Now would, wouldn't give you the best chem, but it will be more than playable. Hmm. It's just different. I don't know if it's better or if it's worse. I just think it's a different system. And we're yet to see if it's actually better or worse, depending on content and depending on how the players play in general on different camp points. What I find quite interesting, though, is if you think, what was the kind of minimum people were willing to play players on in the past? What, like six or seven chem? Or maybe not even six, really. It was like seven, right? Seven. Yeah. And that was giving, let's say you're using a hunter chem style, that's giving plus six acceleration, plus six sprint speed on seven chem. and for two chemistry points, the boost on those stats is only going to be four. So it is a real significant reduction because, yes, okay, people can go all one league for their team and get three chem points on everyone and get a plus eight. But actually, I kind of think that, especially at the start, when it probably won't make sense to do that because there are only so many good players in each position in the different leagues right you it's hard to build a really strong full bundesliga team you can build a good one but i could see it going kind of two ways one is people do really tend towards a full premier league team basically and they kind of overpay for that or people are going to look to kind of build hybrids and accept slightly lower chemistry in exchange for putting in players who are kind of cheaper from other leagues and i think that kind of adds an interesting dynamic it's kind of already existed to some extent i guess do you think there's just going to be acceptance of kind of lower chem, or less boosts? I got a weird gut feeling that there's just going to be this like one, just like every year. There's just going to be like this one team. Actually, I think 22 was maybe a bit different, but I think just, you know, everybody kind of looks towards that one meta team. And I think people are just going to gravitate to that one team that just works. Mm. Maybe it doesn't get full chem, but like it just gets just enough. But if we do go for the full chem mentality, then yeah, there'll just be this one overpowered team that everybody just likes and you're going to see like half the teams be just like that. I mean, that's just what I feel right now. Hmm. I think that has less to do with the system in some ways and more to do with people finding it easier to be told what's yeah. good or told what to do than actually using their brains. Yeah, I would encourage 
all the listeners, don't make a snap judgment on the system until we're at least like halfway through the cycle. Hmm. Because, I mean, we all know from having played for years, what the game feels like for the first month or two is not ultimately how we're going to feel about the game when it's all said and Hmm. done. So this system, I think, has a lot of a lot of potential in the longer run. Near term, people are going to try to retrofit the idea of having full chem like they've always had it and probably are going to whine and complain and be like, I can't do hybrids anymore. Mm-hmm. Put your players on two chem. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, I don't, yeah. No, I think, I think that's actually a really good point. I think a lot of people are going to think, I need to do this. I need to get the full chem. A lot of the sort of top level teams are going to look very, very similar because of that, I think. And I guess it's one of those things where as the year goes on, though, and we will get a lot of promo items, as we got last year, teams are going to change a lot. And really the the similarity between teams, very strong kind of meta teams in the early stage of last year, there were a lot of similarities, but they quickly kind of changed as the cycle uh, went by. So I guess that'll be similar. One thing I did want to quickly point out is actually goalkeeper chemistry. Um, For a long time, for a few years, it's just been understood that basic goalkeeper chemistry, sometimes glove, has been the go-to option because you could get like a plus 10 boost when they're on full chem um, on every attribute. And that would often just max out a keeper um, if they were a top-level keeper. But even on three chemistry points, on goalkeeper basic, the boost is just plus fours across the board. Whereas if you were to use, for example, glove, you'd actually be able to get yourself a plus 15 boost on handling, a plus eight boost on diving. It's only plus four on positioning. But you can see that actually, because you probably want to avoid boosting the less useful stats like kicking and uh, speed to an extent actually you can look to maybe something like glove more frequently or maybe there'll be some of the other chemistry styles you'll use so that's worth noting it's definitely not kind of goalkeeper basic all the way like it tended to be last year to an extent so yeah it's going to be interesting it's going to definitely change things but it makes it yeah a much more interesting start to the cycle perhaps uh, from this perspective which is which is nice Actually, Ivan, what did you make of goalkeepers generally? Did you kind of feel like there was anything to note particularly? I kind of feel like it's not something I noticed so much. So maybe it was quite similar to 22. Yeah, I would say similar to 22. It's it's kind of always a placebo for me. So if people think they're kind of too good, they're going to pay attention to the shots they save. If they think they're bad, they're going to pay attention to the shots they let in. Mm. I've noticed that on power shots, they let in shot they could save but they let it in because of the power shots similar Mm. to to green time finishing i noticed that near post is not as effective as it was previously it's still effective in certain scenarios but i find less goals go in uh, with near post shooting which i personally like because it's more of a football kind of purist vision or idea i don't know how how to to put it Mm. anything else i haven't haven't been specifically impressed or not impressed by. I notice when they rush out of goal quickly, that's the best way to counter power shots in Mm -hmm. 1v1. You just rush them out and hope your opponent doesn't react on time or isn't quick enough to cancel or cue the power shot earlier. But I think it's keepers will, will always be kind of random, unfortunately. So there's not much to analyze there. Mm -hmm. And something specifically to ask, you two, how much pain would you have been in if that thing where FIFA 23 was released a month early had happened when you were there? <laughs> that, oh, God. For those who don't know, yeah, it seems that, an, oh. uh, well, as confirmed, I think, by the EA accounts now, that basically the trial on Xbox was clearly a date set and a month early, right? So it meant that I know, there were ratings been leaked out there, kind of things like that. Yeah, it's a, it would have been really frustrating because you have so many stakeholders that you're... Um, considering when you have a launch campaign, I mean, you know, think about it like this, like, okay, you got your main markets, England, eFigs, England, France, Germany, Spain, Italy, and then maybe like, let's say 15 other markets in each market, you probably have like, you know, let's say England. Oh, you want to do a campaign with, uh, all the partner clubs from England. Let's say there's 10 partner clubs. There's hmm. 20 retailers that you want to work with. There's magazines, there's you know, BBC, Sky, there's so many campaigns you want to work with. And then uh, you promise them exclusivity. So let's say there's 30 stakeholders for each market that you're working with. Multiply that by the five um, big 
markets, but then even multiply that by, let's say there's like 10 to 15. So 30 times 15, that's how many people, how many entities you just pissed off mm. by um, making a mistake like that, where you offer them exclusivity on ratings and, you know, different ideas. Maybe you're doing a, uh, let, let's do a Man City video with uh, certain players with, with, um, with Holland and this and that. And um, all the juice from that just, you know, kind of goes out mm. a bit. Maybe not completely, but, you know, you got to answer to a lot of people. You got to answer to Liverpool because their kits got released, uh, leaked um, by mistake, their third kits. You have a lot of club third kits mm. um, that gets announced. But that has happened in the past. I remember when I was there, we, uh, the MLS logo, I don't know if you guys remember, there's a new MLS logo and it leaked in the game like a day before MLS um. was going to announce their logo. If there's any league to piss off, it's MLS because they're pretty cool to be honest. With you. <laughs> like they, you know, they, uh, they're pretty chill. You don't want to piss off a Premier League team or club or mm. the league itself. You don't want to piss off the, the, the huge leagues. So that's probably what would have happened. And then, you know, when you're, uh, I had a similar thing happen to me when I was at EA. At EA. It was an Xbox issue where, you know, I remember, the pre-orders for like a certain bundle gave you access to FIFA early. Mm. Um, and then mad, just, you just get chewed out by everybody, by clubs, by media partners, by content creators. You just get yelled at consistently and just, you just want to bury yourself. So I'm sure that's what a lot of the guys felt like. As soon as I saw that, as I woke up, I was just like, got PTSD uh. Uh, from all the angry, from all the angry people. But, um, you know what? Uh, the machine still moves. So mm -hmm. what are you going to do? Yeah. Talking of, actually, we're going to move to talk about gameplay in a sec because there's not too much on the content front, but there's quite a bit to talk about on gameplay. Having played the beta, we've got another guest who's a gameplay expert who's been putting out content on the beta who's going to step in for Chewboy in just a second. One thing I wanted to just briefly mention is one to watch. It is confirmed that it's coming back. Standard upgrades in terms of Team of the Week and Man of the Match, but also the wins to watch upgrade returns. So if these players' teams win three matches out of their next eight, starting from the 30th of September, then they'll get themselves an upgrade. And nations to watch, they can also receive a one-time upgrade if their national team wins any game at the World Cup. It's been confirmed that Haaland, Sterling, Nunes and Richarlison will all be ones to watch players. Before we say our goodbyes to Chew and jump into the gameplay chat for a bit, I just wanted to cover one thing. A few people asked, we didn't manage to fit it into the last podcast, what my plans were in the US or things that I really wanted to do in the US. And uh, as Chew, you've lived in the US. Of course, Japes, you're from the US. And you can't make next week's pod, actually, which is a shame. Why don't we just quickly cover that now? I mean, the only thing I know I have to do, because people have kept saying it, is to go um, to Chick-fil-A, actually. Yes. Uh, Chick-fil-A. Chick don't worry about in and outs over Okay. Yeah, yeah in and outs over it. Chick-fil-A is delicious. Of course. I would say if you make it to Chicago, deep dish pizza is a novelty. It's probably worth trying. Mm. And then if you make it down south, you got to grab some barbecue. What city mm. are you going to be in? I'm in Washington, D.C. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's like, eh. Eh. I mean, they have a good. There's like, there's good restaurants there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Keen to go to New Orleans, actually. Not nah, you got to say Nolans. Nolans. Okay. Yeah, then you can get some get some crawfish, some beignets. That sounds like a good place to go for food, right? Dig into that Creole food. I yeah. mean, it's it's going to be different than the rest of the states. Yeah. It's like yeah, its yeah. own kind of unique thing. Yeah, and I should say, actually, obviously interested in things other than food. Was thinking of finding some wilderness perhaps to explore. We don't have too much of it in the UK, and. In fact, listeners, if you have any suggestions, then of course, do get in touch all the usual ways. And we should say our goodbyes to Chew before we jump into a bit of gameplay chat, which will be continued on the supporter episode this week. Thank you very much, Chew. It's been great to have you on again. No problem. Thanks for having me as always. Yeah, where can people catch you actually um, across the various platforms? Uh, at Chewboy for all platforms except for Twitch, where it's uh, Chewboy7 with the number seven. Thanks, Chu. Great to have you on. And up next, we have Taz, who's the man behind The Guide, which is a very informative YouTube <laughs> channel. Welcome to the pod. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm looking really forward to exchange the opinions on FIFA 23, the beta. Yeah, looking forward to it. And we'll start with, and just dive straight into it, the big ticket item, I would say, the headline feature, which is the power shot. It's the thing that those who've been allowed to release content around have said is the OP mechanic, I suppose. And... And what it is, for those who don't know, it is a manually aimed, very long wind-up 
high accuracy and power or increased accuracy and power shots for when your opponent's giving you too much space and you'd like a way to take advantage of that space. And is it actually OP would be my question. Taz, I'll throw you in the deep end. What do you think? I would be quite interested to seeing seeing those clips because, yeah, I don't feel like it's uh, overpowered because you already gave it away when you explained the feature. There's a huge wind-up about it. Like, there are two aspects of, of it which I don't feel like it's OP because of that. Like, one is it takes ages to get a power shot off, so it's going to take some time and mm. it gives your opponent or, like, yourself a lot of time to actually get into the, the line and block the potential shot. And second, it's on manual aiming. So I think quite a lot of us, of the majority of the player base, we are not used on to manual aiming. There is a huge difference in it because if you play on semi, semi or assisted for the aiming assistance, you attend to just aim like beyond the goal to the left or right side. And manual aiming is a huge difference on how you have to aim. You have to be very precise. So like these two aspects, I feel like don't make it as easy to, to actually take advantage or make the this feature totally overpowered. Um, I was able to score some power shots because I also felt like the goalkeepers right in the, in the build or in the version that we played, they were not as good in saving those from time to time. Mm. But overall, I feel like there's some balance in it. Yeah. Are you aiming mainly towards the near post or the far post with those? I, I feel like it depends on the situation. The best case, you would try to see how A, the opponent is going to move his goalkeeper. This is always something which could happening because um, you as an opponent, you will also notice, at least if you have the function still in, that it's going to zoom in as soon as one of those players is using the power shot. The camera is going to zoom in a little bit. So this does give it away that the opponent or you for yourself using the power shot. So this could be a good time to also move the goalkeeper, for example. So you would pay attention to that. So this could be also potentially some mind games in it. Mm. And then obviously how the defenders are positioned. Ivan, what about you? Anything particularly, I think Taz did a very good job there, but anything particularly to add? I think it's funny because you mentioned like content creators think it's overpowered. And I've noticed that pros think it's underpowered in a way. <laughs> they think mm. the, the windup is way too long. Because I assume at pro level, kind of reflexes are quicker and you you expect the shot, etc. So it's easier to stop and block. But I personally mm. think like the windup is approximate, approximately how it should be. Enough windup for you to prepare, but quick enough for you to to be able to unleash a shot that's probably going in. As we uh, as you guys said in the beta, keepers were not good at saving those shots. But I think it's a case of the same way as green time finishing keepers change their animations to kind of let the shot go in because it's green and same thing mm. for this one mm. as well and especially i think if you power shot in green i think it's 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 unsavable and the good thing about this shot which doesn't make it overpowered is that it's manual so if you want to put it in the corner off a tough angle you have to manually aim so for now i think it's balanced maybe it has to be like the windup has to be a bit shorter maybe if you move keeper he has to save it because so far i've seen keeper movement and it just goes through mm. so it's early to tell but for now it looks like a balanced feature ish yeah the question that i think a lot of the listeners will be wondering here is how do you know player attributes or ratings seem to impact this function i think it's mentioned in one of the pitch notes where your finishing is important your power shot stats like your shot power is important I think it's explained in one of the deep dives. So players like Holland, who have like very good finishing and shot power will be really good at those shots. But I think generally it's kind of like a buff, like the green time finishing. So even with weaker players, if you aim manually properly, it, you should be good to go more often than not. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what I found too. I was actually going to follow up about semi-assisted shooting. Did either of you try it? Because it's something that... When we spoke to the gameplay producers, they were saying, you know, this is something that we think top level players will want to take advantage of because you are able to be more accurate, more chance of beating the keeper if you're using semi-assisted. Having tried it, I felt like it would take a lot for me to get used to um, doing semi-assisted, quite like the manual mm. power shots. I guess once I've probably got used to the manual power shots, maybe I would then turn on semi-assisted shooting because I've got more used to manually aiming shots. 
but it did seem like something that was going to be quite hard to get used to. There's a lot of learning to do if you want to do it. Did either of you uh, give it a go? Ivan, did you have a go with semi-assisted? I personally haven't. And I don't think at pro level, any setting that is less assisted than what the game gives you is worth it because you put yourself in a disadvantage more often than not compared to other people. So for example, with passing, right? I don't like sometimes when my passes are assisted somewhere I don't want them to be. So I could turn passing to manual or semi, but then I don't get the assistance and the pass avoidance that I would get if I had the setting on. So mm. in certain cases, it's good, but more often than not, it's, it's detrimental to me compared to other people who use those settings. So I don't think at pro level, it's worth it. Would the counts to that not be though, like if semi was giving you a significant improvement in your accuracy, but you didn't have to aim loads, people would do it, right? So there's always yeah. some trade-off, but but especially at pro level, you have you don't have a lot of time in the box. So sometimes when you mm. have such little time, you just press shoot and aim at the corner flag, and your shot is assisted. So yeah. if your opponent aims at a corner flag, shoots and scores in the corner, and in the exact same scenario, you shoot and the ball goes in the corner flag, he has an advantage only because of the settings, right? So yeah. I I think. In the long run, I don't think it's it's worth enough for you to be more manual if others are not manual. Mm. Here's an interesting point then. What if, because I was thinking this when I was playing, if they made a setting where if it's a first time shot, it would be assisted automatically. But if you'd had more touches before that, it was going to be semi-assisted. I feel like that would be better because as you say, like when you've got a cross coming in or something like that i mean actually cross is coming in that's kind of heading as manual isn't it so it's kind of yeah. like that but but actually yeah when you're having to respond quickly to to change in circumstance in the box it makes it really hard to do semi-assisted shooting but that being said when you're quite close to the goal it felt like i was able to score quite consistently on semi-assisted it's more like if you're taking on like a very snapshot from the edge or on the angle or something like that it made it very very hard um, and you wouldn't get things like a corner so often right for example because you're missing the goal completely instead of getting it on target with power <laughs> um so yeah no i do agree i think it's not something that a lot of people are going to be doing but maybe some people will um taz any thoughts on that i think i i can agree to what you brought up that i feel like it could be work well quite together like that you start using manual aiming because you use power shots and then you get more accustomed to the way how you have to aim because manual like this is i think the most challenging and if you master mm. that or if, if you feel like you get a good percentage of success with that, a good success rate, then maybe this could incline you to, to go to semi-assisted for the general shooting because you feel like like this, then you don't have to change up your whole approach because right now if you have power shots on manual, which you have to do, and then the overall aiming is assisted, like this is like very the opposite sides of both. But maybe mm. um, if you start using power shots more often and then you then it's not a big change when you just just do a normal shot, for example. So maybe that's could be a reason why it makes sense to start trying to to master it because then you will be good for both ends, basically. Mm -hmm. one, one thing I would like to add, I haven't tried out the semi-assisted shooting as well. So uh, I can't really mm -hmm. like for me, I would really have to understand what kind of situations the difference is for semi-assisted in comparison to assisted like what do i have to take care of what do i in what kind of situations it's going to make a huge huge difference um, maybe as you already said like inside the box when you're close to the goal it's not as hard but when you are outside going for a quick shot there's a huge difference and what can you actually fix in way how you approach the the aiming and what is like something which is totally very un unnatural on how you like to play the game for example mm -hmm. yeah no, uh, yeah that does make sense and i think well, one thing I was going to say actually is, did either of you get into cancelling power shots? Because <laughs> it, it works quite well. <laughs> I quite like that. Because <laughs> especially with the way that it does this different thing where it zooms in basically on your player, like your opponent sees that, unless they've turned it off, you can turn it off. And it makes it really obvious you're going to go for it. So I kept like powering it up at the edge of the box. You know, your <laughs> opponent would come try and block the shot and then you just cancel it and like move around them was, was quite a, a kind of fun thing to do. It's not like skill cancelling. It's quite an easy thing to cancel because it's quite a long animation. But uh, that's kind of fun. I was also going to ask, was anyone using it in other situations other than from outside the box? Because I felt like actually, well, weirdly, certain kind of volley situations, like when the ball's coming in and you have a lot of time to take it down, I felt like that was helping quite a bit to get kind of power on volleys when you wouldn't normally. But I don't know whether there were any other situations people 
we're ending up using it in. I started using it sometimes inside the box just to understand how viable it's going to be also for those situations when you, for example, one versus one against the goalkeeper, is it worth actually going for it or how long does it take mm -hmm. maybe to actually get the shot off and if there's a chance still for the opponent to catch it up. So just more or less to understand the feature and how impactful it's going to be. But mm -hmm. I think like especially the situations at the edge of the box, for example, um, I think it's the most viable way of using it. Mm -hmm. I personally didn't use it for long shots, almost. Mm -hmm. I mainly use it on breakaways when it's 1v1 okay. with the keeper because on the beta it was easy to kind of get an over-the-top through ball and be 1v1. So when you have a lot of time and space, you're just running towards the edge of the box. It is kind of a technically a long shot, but 1v1, mm -hmm. they bring keeper out and you shoot. If you're aiming on goal and keeper's not too close, you're scoring. And again, when I just do a nice passing play in the box and it's a 1v1 with the keeper not coming out, that's when I use it. I think for long shots, it's easier to block and I don't think it's that worth it. And uh, regarding cancelling, it does give you kind of <laughs> this weird feeling of zooming in, zooming out, zooming in, zooming out. Mm. And I'm glad they added the feature of taking it of, of taking it away if you don't want to be seeing it for some accessibility reason, if you will, even. Mm -hmm. Because I know some people have an issue with that as well. But um, yeah, I didn't use it for long shots as much, but I think powering up a shot and greening it long shot, it's more often than not probably a goal. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how that plays out. And also, actually, the other gameplay features, rare that we leave this on such a cliffhanger, but we are going to talk about those on the supporter gameplay episode. Continued discussion of some game-changing gameplay features, what we made of them and our recommendations. If you're not yet a supporter and you want to catch that, as well as some how to start FIFA 23 type content, then you can catch that over on Patreon. There'll be your main podcast feed episodes as well, which you can get via Apple Podcasts, Spotify, etc. But the supporters keep it going, so they get an extra podcast every week. And you can get one too. It's just £3 a month. If you're interested, then just search Support Foot Weekly. If you decide to, then a huge thank you for keeping the podcast going. And a big thank you, of course, to those supporters out there currently keeping the podcast going, including those icon patrons. Dave B, Coach Vass, Chris W, DJ FIFA Player, Hugh J, Steve C, Matt L, Alistair, Alan G, Anthony R, Dominic, Rob P, L, Jeff B, Christopher R, Stephen F, Michael, Tom B, Damon H, Nick Jack M, Eric T, Roger D, Alex M, Dan W, Sila P, Matt H, Harry P, Neil P, Adam G, At Pace of a Tortoise, Brian S, Andrew C, Sam K, Jake G, Michael P, Zach O, Springford, Patrick, Dominic G, Adam HC, Adam R, Andy H, Joe W, Dylan, Orion B, Mindor L, and Tim J. Plus a special thanks to Luke M, Dave B, Hugh J, Tom M, Darren W, and Pato Foot for advice and production assistance. Before I leave you, just one more thing to add though. FIFA's a bit like life really. It has its many ups and its many downs. If you're having a few more downs than ups in real life in these more difficult times, then please don't feel that you're alone or need to struggle on without taking action. If you go to thecalmzone.net, there's loads of resources, advice, support, or even just a friendly chat for anyone who needs it. If it sounds like it could help you, then head over to thecalmzone.net. And for now, have a good one, and I'll catch you on the next podcast.